Right, um, it's just since I'm live, so I must be. Uh, don't feel that much alive this morning, to be quite honest. But, um, I'm, I'm sat in my studio, and it's quite mild at the moment, New Yorkshire, so it um, makes a change. It's got a storm coming apparently tonight, so yeah. Uh, I'm going to try and make this as quick as possible, because otherwise I'll just ramble on. Right, I'm trying to stop on track as well. This thing about implication and suggestion, um, I first saw it in um, Sargent's paintings, in his portraits, uh, when he implied and suggested certain things, certain elements of the face, features, eyes, mouths. He just, it was a quick brush mark. And that, that fascinated me that you could imply something, or suggest something. Um, and I recently seen somebody talking about less is more. Um, it's not less is more. It's, um, um, it's, it is, an, it's nearly kind of like that because what happens is people will fill in the blanks. You know, you think you hear people talking about lost edges and stuff, stuff like that. And again, that's a, you let the audience, the viewer fill in the blanks. Um, so, but you have to suggest and imply the location of these things and the trajectory of the side of the face. You have to do those sort of things. So, if you understand that it's about, I'm going to imply that there's an eye there. So we did this. This is that demo we did the other week, uh, the other day. And there's lots of it on here. There's lots of implication and suggestion of the eye and the shapes of the eye. Then it's not really drawing, but you can see that it's implying that there's something happening there with the, the hair. And it's all it's all over the place. I don't know how many more of these are like. Um, use. I, it, it comes, I mean, I, I'm conscious of it some of them are probably too finished for um, for you to see you know it actually working uh the quicker drawings tend to be like that one i've just dropped quicker ones like that which take sort of half an hour tend to be more implication and suggestion because that just means that you know the the viewer can fill in the picture some of these are the same are not really exa good examples of that i probably is because there's nothing detail wise on that you can see so it's implying and suggesting there but um this this thing i suppose is <laughs> i'm going to say this but i I, th I look at it as being a lazy thing because i look at the the drawing so i'm going to scribble this as quick as i can because i don't want i don't want to get sort of bogged down by and I probably won't finish it, but I want to show you little bits of the the implication and suggestion thing. Um, but I always think of it as, as, I call it reduction more than simplification. It's, it's a case of how what's the least I can draw to tell you that that eye there is that eye and what's going off with that eye. What's the, what's the minimum I need to draw to tell you what's happening with the eye? That's that's kind of where it comes from with me. Um, because it's because of the, the speed of the, you know, the connection with the subject and all that kind of thing, I don't really I don't really have time to um, get into details of exactness and, and, pre and precision. So what's the minimum I need to do is usually the question I'm asking myself to actually show you that, that what's going off with this. But it's that, it is, it is as simple as that. It's nothing more than, um, than as I said, kind of a lazy way of doing it. It's, uh, and I, th I think if you, you know, you're um, in some kind of pressure situ situation where doing demonstrations and stuff like that, or you're just sort of sat in front of somebody and or you wanted to draw them and they're about to get up and walk away or whatever, um, definitely capturing the bits that matter. And this is that this is again, I suppose, a a, a, um, a a legacy of the sort of sergeant approach, which is this thing of using a larger brush. Um, the, the the idea of using a larger brush from his point of view, I suppose, was like I've sort of intimated that you don't need to draw everything. You just need to draw the bits that are important. Using a larger brush, you're kind of forcing yourself not to get involved with uh, the, the details and, and very quickly just make the marks that uh, that matter. So, because, you know, a sergeant's famous for using long handle brushes and working at a distance and all the rest of it. So the further you away, the less control you've got of it. So you tend to make marks that are important and the ones that aren't don't get made because it's too fussy or whatever. So so this idea of, of implying and suggesting kind of comes from that. I think the if you if you really want to get into the sort of sergeant vibe, 
then it's all about um, accuracy, efficiency, and economy, which is the accuracy of the first marks, the efficiency of them, how well they actually communicate. And the economy is basically only using them what the minimum you need to use. So the that particular um, way of thinking is is probably a bit more sophisticated than suggest and imply, but it's it's definitely part and uh, uh, parcel of the same thinking. So so as I said, I, I don't really want to get into uh, finishing this. I wanted to show you that um, using the minimum uh, of marks reduction, if you like, uh, it's not less is more. Um, it's it's more in the in respect that people will complete the image and you know um it looks like there's more so you suggest that there's um, there's detail there or because sometimes people say that to me oh your drawing's so detailed i've never never ever worried about the detail of the drawing so um so it's not it's not that but i'm doing enough to suggest that there's detail there you know, often with beards or hair, you can, if you do enough to suggest that there's detail there, then then the, the viewer will complete the picture. It's as simple as that. And it's one of those things where, because we can recognise uh, people at a, a quite a distance, considerable distance, uh, that function that all of us have got, then you can play on that. I mean, apart from the... the um, um, you're doing it yourself, you're actually um, um, engaging with the, the audience, the, the viewer, to do exactly the same thing. So they will uh, do the, you know, the, the heavy lifting, if you like, if you don't want to get, or get into doing all the, the, the details of things, you can get them to do it. For you. And uh, and it's got people like, people like the, uh, the idea of being involved in the, you know, the um, construction, if you like, the completion, the construction of, a, of an image. And lots of people will say, oh, I like it when they sort of leave bits out, you know, the sort of uh, people that don't know that that's kind of what people refer to when they talk about lost edges and things. But, um, as I said, it's not it's not a difficult thing to do. It's, it's it's this question of what's the minimum I need to to draw or to paint in order to communicate this face, and that's it. That's nothing. There's nothing more than that. Imply and suggest, and let the uh, and let the viewer do the rest. As I say, I'm not going to do any more than that because um, I just wanted to show you where it's coming from. Um, the this the, a lot of people that do the almost like shadow map thing. Where it's it's you know sort of eye sockets that sort of, sort of blending and smudge within an inch of the life kind of thing. That's not that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. Um, for me, I, I still have to have that element of drawing within it. So it's still there are still lines that are floating around. There are still um, um, edges of things that are floating around. Or occasional occasional uh, emphasis brought to a certain thing. Um, so it, that's not the you know, smudge it till it looks all blended and you've got like a, 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 a almost like a silhouette drawing. It's not that, um, it, that does imply and suggest, but it doesn't do it in the same way because you can't get, there is still a requirement for it to be, you know, some kind of, um, uh, uh, not precision, but, you know, sort of detail in it. But that's, that's not going to happen if you're doing the sort of smudging and blurring thing. Um, and yeah, that's it. I mean, as I, say, I don't want to get bogged down with this. I just wanted to talk about the um, the implication and suggestion, and essentially is drawing as little as possible to communicate as much as possible. Um, and um, as I said, look at any sergeants; you'll see it happening in a sergeant's work. Um, um, and that's it. You know, it's not about execution it's not about uh, skill i mean obviously i'll just run through what how, how this works uh the dots find the dots however you find the dots i find them by scribbling um i'm uh, once i found the dots the three points that make you know what i mean i found those by just f feeling my way around the face um once i found those things then i'm looking for the shapes and then uh, with the shapes i'll apply some tone so i can see the shapes better this is not complicated stuff um and that and uh, most of that is driven by this thing you know what's the least i need to do as i said it's kind of like a, a lazy man's approach to drawing portraits but maybe i should have called it that but uh, um but that's it so as i said imply and suggest look at any sergeants and look at the way he uses just simple marks 
to imply and suggest m many things from glasses to beards and everything. I mean, this fame itself, his self portrait, you look at his mustache, simple stuff, very, very, uh, you know, um, simple marks that all imply and suggest that, 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 um, um, his, his beard and his mustache. I suppose that's his, what, people would call um, a, an impressionistic style. Uh, but I'm not really one for style, I'm more one for sort of getting a job done and uh, whatever that style is, then that's it, you know. So, but I'm not really, um, I, I don't have the patience anymore to put the, the work in to make it detailed. So I tend to follow this, you know, more simplistic way of doing it. Anyway, so that's it. I didn't want to drag on with this just very quick. Um, obviously, you can see you can see what happens. You can see how they, they you know, the the various points. Of, I'm just doing. I've just done another one this morning. You can see there are, there are elements within that. Um, the same kind of thing. Um, but but it's 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 such a rapid thing. Um, as you can see, it's such a rapid way of working because you're only looking for what's important. You're not looking for everything. And, you know, once you've got over the three dots thing, once you've got where, you know, figuring out where everything should lie, um, and then you just look for what's important, you can gradually look more and more into it. So you kind of start from a point of where, a bit like Robert Henry, he said, you define the face with with shapes and draw the face with shapes if you can, whatever you do after that is kind of irrelevant. Um, and that's that's what it is. It's, it's, you know, you, you sort of once you've got things in the right place, and you can start to, um, if you want, increase the you know sort of the accuracy of things, move them around a bit, and just just make it a little bit more tidy. But it's up to you. Um, but you've got you've got a good ground to go wherever you want to go with it. A lot of people will probably take it a lot further and start to refine things. But you can see as that eye starts to build there, I can take things away and, and just sort of tidy everything up. And you know, but it's it's there. You know, it's it's that's it. It's not it's not complicated. So, um, but but this is not a simplification. This is not trying to make things amalgamated or simplifying shapes and that becomes one big shape. It's not really that. It's more about focusing on, as I said, um, uh, only what's important and on um, um, sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, I, I've just lost it again for a minute there, and uh, and. Uh, um, not getting too embedded within the sort of detail of things because that's always going to it's always going to you know you start to look at things this is the, the problem with knowledge if you if you've gone on a knowledge journey then you know you, you're going to be looking at eyes in a different way because you're going to want to know about how the eyelid works and the socket works and all the rest of it but when you're all you're concerned with is the distance between there and there and the distance between there and there and so on and so forth if that's all you're concerned with and the relation between that eye the size of that socket for instance and then maybe that bit there if those are the things you're concerned with then drawing's a lot easier if you're concerned with the details of things then it becomes it's a different journey you know you may want to have that journey but but as i said that's that's a different kind of thing if you're journeying, you just want to get there's a lot of point where you can you can do these within an hour or whatever then then you need to focus on what's important and and suggest and imply but like i say that's i didn't want to i didn't want to drag on too much and i thought 10 minutes was a bit short so i just rambled a bit then so it's um cartridge paper and um uh hazel again hazel uh charcoal but nothing uh nothing special you can uh, yeah i mean i'm not really a, a materials guy so use whatever you can get hold of don't use this is just a personal thing but i'm just gonna say don't use paper that's got a texture because it gets, it just gets it's in the way. You know, it becomes a dominant. You know, when you see charcoal and it's got like pitting, and and the same happens with watercolor. I always think that people that paint on watercolor, where they, you know, and they use, they don't understand about the pigments of watercolor, and you get the granules of the paint that's sitting in the. People like that. I, I know a friend of mine loves it, but I, I don't like to see the texture of the paper when I'm drawing a portrait I always think that I need to be in charge of all the tonal variance and all the tonal control um if the if the paper contributes to that then I, I, it's not I'm not in control you know it's the paper that's part of that the process I'm not interested in I want I want to be in, I'm a control freak I want to be in control of everything that happens so uh, so that's it 
I'm, um, as I said, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm trying not to rumble with this, so, um, as, as is my way. So, anyway, um, as you can see, it starts to build. You know, the face starts to build, but it starts from that point of what's the least I can do or least I need to do to define the elements that I see. This is not about eyes, nose, and mouths. This is about shapes and tone. And, and the relationship to each other. It's not about noses and, and eyes and don't go off on some kind of, I'm going to learn to draw, practice eyes and all that thing, you know, because that's just, a, that's just, you know, torture. <laughs> that's the way, that's the way to sort of take the joy from it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Practicing to draw eyes over and over again. That's how you take the joy out of drawing. <laughs> um, but you can see with this, you can see the life in it, you can see the joy in it, you can see that, but, you know, by approaching it this way, what's the, like I say, the lazy way is, um, is, is, is a much more fun way of doing it. And, and it's much more effective. As you can see, it's much more effective. Uh, the, the critical thing will be, though, you've got to get your dots sorted. You've got to check, you watch the other video, check your, um, check how accurate your, uh, your, observation is before you start and then keep practicing your observation like i say you know the three dots on the other video we've got three dots crossed up if you can't get those three dots in the right place by transferring them across what chance have you got with the face so just practice the dots practice your, your uh, improving your visual accuracy and uh, and then when you come to this you'll see a massive improvement on the way you draw and it's, um, as somebody referred to it as a trick, it's not a trick. It's just a measurement of your ability. That's all it is. And if you want to apply it uh, um, to improve your accuracy, then that's, you know, your observational accuracy. That's that's how you use it. So it's not a trick. It's just, um, just helps you to see better. Uh, but you need to know how you see now. Because if you can't see, as I said, with accuracy now, drawing a face is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> so, right, I'll let you go. Because I'm, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to get, bogged down with this and I've got some other drawings to do today so I'll catch you in the next one